a bit of an impulse buy, but at under $14 for a kit that promised to test transistors, diodes, LEDs, capacitors, inductors and resistors, I thought it was worth a punt. It had some good reviews. So I put in an order. About three or four weeks later, I got this in the post. I was initially worried because there are no instructions. Not even a card inside saying where you could get them off the web. Only a couple of things to be aware of. Push the transistors under the display further into the board, otherwise there may not be enough clearance. Luckily I was able to bend them gently. The switch you see here could go in the board either way, but only one way is correct. It's a normally open switch that needs to short the two tracks you see here when pressed. The meter has three input pins. To calibrate, you first of all have to short them. You use three pieces of wire soldered together as you see in my hand. Once done, you can then start to test your components. With no capacitor connected across the input, it's measuring 35 picofarad. So if you are trying to measure small capacitors, you would deduct 35 picofarads. Notice how the meter just went off. That's its auto power off function. It's quite clever. You just press the switch, it gives you a reading for a few seconds, and then it powers off automatically. Here's a one nanofarad connected. Here's a tantalum, 47 microfarads according to the case. It comes up as 45 and it also gives an ESR value. A 47 microhenry RF choke. A germanium diode. Interesting, it only gives you a capacitance value and not the voltage. Here's another germanium diode, here it gives a capacitance value, even though the diode is connected between pins 1 and 3. Just testing the diode on another meter with a diode test function, and it gives a reasonable reading. So I'd say this little instrument has its limitations when it comes to testing germanium diodes. Now with a silicon diode, here's a more realistic reading. We'll just compare it with the other meter. Next we'll try a transistor. A beta of 522, it tells you it's an NPN and even the pinout. Emitter, base and collector. Here's an LED. Like with transistors, it ingeniously gives you the polarity of the LED. It only took a couple of hours to build, making it a great evening project. The lack of documentation is a minor grizzle, but all parts were supplied and the quality of the circuit board and the components seems very good. If you need something for RF, like to measure small capacitor or inductor values, or even test germanium diodes, then perhaps this kit is not for you. But if you're into many other aspects of electronics, such as digital or audio circuitry, then this kit might be just up your alley.